Let's talk about deaf representation in film. Up until recent years, recognition of this particular demographic of diversity and inclusion in cinema has been next to non-existent. Hollywood's track record of grossly underrepresenting or misappropriating the deaf community is a clear symptom of larger conversations surrounding disability in media being ignored or pushed to the side in studio executives' offices. Starting in the late 2010s, however, there seems to have been a new wave of deaf representation within popular culture, which can arguably be traced back to John Krasinski's directorial breakout film, A Quiet Place. In April of 2018, the film premiered to significant critical and commercial success, grossing a total of over $340 million worldwide. Following its debut, there have been a slew of widely successful films starring deaf actors and attempting to ignite discourse about social perceptions of disability. These films include, but are not limited to, 2020 Best Picture nominated Sound of Metal, directed by Darius Martyr, Sean Hader's Coda, which swept numerous 2021 Sundance Awards, and most recently, the latest entry into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Chloe Zhao's Eternals. So what sets these films apart from the score of misfires that came before them? How have they managed to dismantle our predisposed perceptions about what disability means? And what conversations do we need to be having about deaf representation in film and television? You know, I think hearing people don't really understand that this this is, it goes way beyond the actual physical condition of deafness. It's a it's a distinct culture, and in that and under the umbrella of deaf culture, there's many subcultures. But deaf culture with a capital D is a very real thing, and that's the first huge learning curve. We are very hearing centric. We're very able bodied. Thinkers, we think of ASL as, as an interpretation of English, it is not. The term deaf culture may be an elusive one to those who are unfamiliar with the deaf community. Even today, the majority of the hearing population is inclined to view deafness as simply the condition of hearing loss. Recent disability media studies, however, have begun to challenge the social structures surrounding disability and able-bodiedness, suggesting that much more than simply a narrative trope or plot device within film and television, disability exists as a cultural identity, socioeconomic status, and political category. According to Elizabeth Elsesser, Mac Haggard, and Bill Kirkpatrick, in their Introduction to Disability Media Studies, the medical model understands disability as an ontological fact in the world rather than a constructed social and political position. People with bodily differences, quote, have something wrong with them and are regarded as medical problems to be solved. This is still the dominant, quote, common sense way of thinking about disability. The acceptance of this medical model and fundamental misunderstanding of the condition of disability is reflected and perpetuated by Hollywood's historic refusal to appropriately cast deaf actors in deaf roles. For example, in 1969, Alan Arkin was nominated for an Oscar for his portrayal of deaf man John Singer in Robert Ellis Miller's The Heart is a Lonely Hunter. More recently, Julianne Moore was cast into a deaf role in Todd Haynes' 2017 film Wonderstruck. John Krasinski's A Quiet Place was one of the most culturally significant films of recent years that broke out of this mold, with Krasinski insisting on casting a deaf actor into the role of Regan. Millie is actually deaf in real life, and it was non-negotiable for me to cast a deaf actress because the character is deaf, not only for the incredibly layered and more honest performance since she's living through it every day, but also I needed a guide. I needed someone to walk me through what it was like to be the only deaf person in a hearing family. Do you get frustrated? Do you feel empowered? All these different things. And she was incredibly generous and so amazing to have on set. Similar to A Quiet Place, the MCU's newest installment, Eternals, brings a deaf heroine to the big screen. Well, it's so, it's crucial. I mean, it's so long overdue. I can't believe that we are having this conversation today in 2021. I mean, really? Films like Coda and Sound of Metal continue to challenge and offer refutations to the medical model of disability highlighted by Elsesser et al. Portraying deafness not as an issue that needs to be fixed, but as a lived experience that serves as the foundation for the cultural identity of those within the deaf community. As you know, everybody here shares in the belief that being deaf is not a handicap, not something to fix. It's pretty important around here. All these kids, all of us need to be reminded of it every day.
As we take a final look at these films, let us recognize that though each of them undeniably serves as a stepping stone towards more nuanced, inclusive, and informed representation of the deaf community, that the work is nowhere near done. Deafness remains something that is widely misunderstood by hearing audiences, which is indicative of the lack of recognition and representation that we give to the deaf community. As filmgoers and media consumers, it is our responsibility to hold studios to a standard defined by inclusivity and appropriate authentic portrayals of the deaf experience. By examining films that have achieved the standard while simultaneously garnering critical success, we can begin to understand the steps that we need to take in order to create a film and media industry that's truly reflective of the world we live in today.